Well, Joe Biden finally had a press conference. Maybe it would have been better <laughs> if he hadn't had it. Two hour press conference. And he was asked specifically if these Republicans don't pass the voting rights legislation that you say is critical to save our nation, will you begin to question the legitimacy of the midterm elections? <laughs> Here's what happened. I just wanted to clarify a moment ago, you were asked whether or not you believed that we would have free and fair elections in 2022 if some of these state legislatures reformed their voting protocols. You said that it depends. Uh, do you do you think that they would in any way be illegitimate? Oh, yeah, I think it easily could be, be illegitimate. Imagine, imagine if, in fact, Trump has succeeded in convincing Pence to not count the votes. And there was a follow up question. Imagine if... In, in regards to 2022, sir, the midterm Oh, 2022. I mean, uh, imagine if those uh, attempts to say that uh, the count was not legit. You have to recount it, and we're not going to count. We're going to discard the following votes. I mean, sure, it, 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 I'm not saying it's going to be legit. It's the increase in the prospect of being illegitimate is in direct proportion to us not being able to get these, these reforms passed. Wow. Now, for people who are critical of this, and there were, uh, Savannah Guthrie of Today's Show, she seemed taken aback. Let's talk about another comment the president made. He openly cast doubt on whether the 2022 midterm elections would be legitimate. He said it all depends, um, which is astonishing to hear a president question whether our elections will be legitimate. We've heard it before, but not from this president. Is he really concerned that, that we may not have fair and free elections? The president has been consistent on this issue and the issue at hand, the issue I was there last night uh, in the chamber of the Senate, and the issue is that there are two bills, the John Lewis Voting Rights Act and the Freedom to Vote Act that have been the, the solution that has been offered to address the fact that around our country, states have put in place laws that are purposely making it more difficult for the American people to vote. Laws which will be felt by at least 55 million Americans, regardless of their party affiliation, their race, their gender, or their geographic location. Well, to the point, though, because so those we bills have been were clear, debated. And it's, but it's, yeah, the, the, the bills it's, were it's, debated it's, and they didn't pass. If so I may the, finish, the specific, if I may, if I may course, finish. But the specific question, if you don't mind, does he think now that these bills haven't been passed, that the 22 midterms won't be legitimate or fair or free? Let's not conflate issues. So what we are looking at and, and the topic of so much debate last night was that we as America cannot afford to allow this blatant erosion of our democracy and in particular the right of all Americans who are eligible to vote to have access to the ballot unfettered. That is the topic of the conversation and let's not be distracted by the political gamesmanship when what is truly at stake are, are, are issues like whether Americans with disability have the opportunity to vote by mail, whether a single parent has the opportunity with three kids in the back seat to vote by dropping off their ballot in a drop box instead of having to stand in line with those three kids for hours. These are the issues that are at stake. And Dana Bash at CNN, she was surprised that, like Trump, Joe Biden would preemptively question the legitimacy of the mid-year elections in 2022? Well, particularly the first part, Anderson, what, what he said uh, was, actually the entire thing, but the first part was probably the most jarring uh, to hear a president of the United States who is not Donald Trump even suggest ahead of time that an election isn't legitimate. Why is everybody so surprised? I mean, after all, Joe Biden said, if you don't want to pass this legislation, you're on the side of Bull Connor. You're on the side of George Wallace. You're on the side of Jefferson Davis. So I ask every elected official in America, how do you want to be remembered? At consequential moments in history, they present a choice. 
Do you want to be the side, on the side of Dr. King or George Wallace? And I say segregation now, segregation tomorrow, and segregation forever. Do you want to be on the side of John Lewis or Bull Connor? You can never whip these birds if you don't keep you and them separate. You've got to keep the white and the black separate. Do you want to be on the side of Abraham Lincoln or Jefferson Davis? What did Biden say? It's worse than Jim Crow. It's Jim Eagle? Republican voters, the folks out in the outside this White House. I'm not talking about the, the elected officials. I'm talking about voters, voters. And so I'm convinced that we'll be able to stop this because it is the most pernicious thing. This makes Jim Crow look like Jim Eagle. I mean, this is gigantic what they're trying to do. Again, Biden said, whose side do you want to be on? Do you want to be on the side of MLK? Or do you want to be on the side of those dastardly guys over there. By the way, they were Democrats. By the way, guess which Democrat Joe Biden once bragged he received an award from? George Wallace. Notice how Biden whispers a lot? George Wallace. Now, here's the problem. You can't, on the one hand, say that passing the voting rights legislation, the John Lewis voting rights legislation, is absolutely critical to save our nation to save our democracy. It's actually republic, but they always say democracy. You can't say it's vital to save our democracy. And then when asked, if these Republicans don't pass the legislation, will you doubt the legitimacy of 2022 midterm elections? You can't then say, ah, no biggie. If they don't pass the legislation, we're still good. You can't do that. The problem is they've now put themselves in a corner. What's the biggest attack line against Donald Trump? He's a sore loser. He believes in conspiracy theories. He's been promoting, wait for it, the big lie. Now, we've talked about this before. Regarding the 2016 election, there was a 1,000-page Senate report that found the Russians, while they tried mightily, failed to change a single vote tally. Yet 66% of Democrats, according to a YouGov poll, believe the Russians, quote, changed vote tallies in order to get Donald Trump to win. And the report found no evidence one way or the other whether or not the Russian interference altered the outcome of the election. 78% of Democrats, according to Gallup, kind of a respected poll, 78% of Democrats believe the Russian interference altered the outcome of the election. And for anybody who would listen, Hillary Clinton said for the entirety of President Trump's presidency, the election was stolen and called Donald Trump illegitimate. Here's a refresher course. I believe he knows he's an illegitimate president. He knows. He knows that there were a bunch of different reasons why the election turned out the way it did. And I think it's also critical to understand that, as I've been telling candidates who have come to see me, you can run the best campaign, you can even become the nominee, and you can have the election stolen from you. So now, assuming Donald Trump runs again in 2024, and I believe he will, how are they going to say Donald Trump has pushed the big lie when Hillary pushed the big lie for four years and Joe Biden is now basically making the same argument about the midterm elections in 2022? The sound you just heard is the air coming out of the Donald Trump is a sore loser. Donald Trump is a purveyor of the big lie. Donald Trump has been pushing conspiracy theories. The air that you're hearing is the air coming out of that narrative. Now, what was the over-under on how long people were going to somehow defend what Joe Biden said? It wasn't very long. Here is a quote from a publication called The Hill. Listen to this. The key distinction is that Trump hasn't been able to back up any of his fraud claims in court, and they have been dismissed by members of his own party, end of quote. They've been dismissed by some members of his own party, notably Liz Cheney and Mitt Romney, but not by most. And regarding most of Donald Trump's claims have been dismissed, let's just talk about a few states. Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Michigan. Let's start with Wisconsin, shall we? Donald Trump filed a lawsuit to overturn the results in Wisconsin. And it is true. He lost four to three. 
That's a narrow decision. And the chief justice filed a dissent. She was concerned about how they corrected errors that were made on the ballot envelopes and the use of these drop boxes. And here's what she said, referring to the majority that ruled against hearing the case on the merits, quote, a significant portion of the public does not believe that the November 3, 2020 presidential election was fairly conducted. Four members of this court, through the cloak of laches, laches is a legal term meaning the Donald Trump lawsuit was filed too late. It's procedural. Four members of this court, through the cloak of laches, over numerous problems that will be repeated again and again until this court has the courage to correct them. One of the many problems you referred to was the use of drop boxes all over Wisconsin. She felt that they were unlawful. Do you know who else who recently found the use of the drop boxes were unlawful? A Waukesha Circuit judge. He said, there's nothing in the law that allows for this. What are you talking about? So for upcoming elections, he ruled that they shouldn't be used. Again, the Wisconsin Supreme Court ruled four to three based on procedural grounds not to take up the case that Donald Trump filed to overturn the election in that state. But three justices, including the Wisconsin Supreme Court justice, filed a dissent and said, uh-uh, we should have taken this case on the merits. That's how close this case was. That's Wisconsin. Now, Pennsylvania. In the case of Pennsylvania, even Alan Dershowitz, who's not a Republican, he voted twice for Obama, he said that the challenge that Donald Trump filed against Pennsylvania should be taken up by the Supreme Court, would be taken up by the Supreme Court, and that when the Supreme Court took it up, Donald Trump would win it. You know, we have to wait to see uh, about recounts, and we have to wait to see whether the, there is any evidence of systemic fraud. I do think that Trump will win the Pennsylvania lawsuit, namely the lawsuit that challenges ballots that were filed before the end of the day, election day, but not received until after election day. The legislature had basically said no to that. And the state Supreme Court said yes, because of the pandemic. You know, that may have been the, the right decision in some theoretical sense, but the Constitution doesn't permit anybody in the state but the legislature to make decisions about elections. And that was decided peripherally as well in Bush versus Gore. And I think that four to four vote would become a five to four vote if the issue came before the Supreme Court and there were enough disputed ballots to make a difference in the outcome of the election. That remains to be seen. So I think legally they have a sound argument. And I have nothing but praise for lawyers who want to use every possible argument and exhaust every legal remedy. That's their job. And the idea that some lawyers are threatening to quit law firms like Jones and Day and uh, and right, uh, Morris, because they don't like the fact that some lawyers in the firm are making these arguments on behalf of President Trump is such a violation of legal ethics and what lawyers are supposed to be doing. Now, the Supreme Court ended up not taking up the case. So Alan Dershowitz's prediction was wrong. And as a result, they did not rule on the merits. But you know what else? There was a recent videotape that surfaced. And this conversation took place after the November 2020 election. And there is a Pennsylvania election official literally saying we didn't follow the law. Next time, we're going to have to follow the law. Watch this. So why don't we talk about that offline? Because um, Jim and I had a brief conversation today. And this time, it's much different than last time because we're going to have them sign O's. They're going to need W-4s. And... We need them to sign something allowing them to somebody else to pick up. So we're going to actually follow the law fully this time. <laughs> and um, so there's a lot more stuff in our letters. That brings us to Michigan. The Secretary of State mailed applications for mail-in balloting to every registered voter in Michigan, whether that voter requested it or not. And a dissent filed in the appellate case, two to one, again, a very narrow decision, said you had no legal authority to do that. Voters have to request it. You can't send it to everybody who's registered. That's exactly what they did. They sent in an application for a mail-in ballot to every registered voter. Uh-uh, said the dissent. And I'm quoting. The dissenting justice said, there are only limited ways that an absentee ballot may be procured. 
Again, these include the voter making a written request for an application, typically from a local clerk, or obtaining an absentee ballot application form provided by a local clerk. None of these prerequisites were met in this case, end of quote. One more thing, the voting rights legislation that the Democrats claim is vital for the salvation of our republic excludes the use of photo voter ID. Now, we love to talk about how countries in Europe have a universal health care coverage and we should be like them. How do those states feel about photo voter ID? Let's take a look. John Lott, in an article called Voting Fraud is a Real Concern, Just Look Around the World, says this. Aside from our country, there are 36 member states in the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. 47% ban mail-in voting unless a citizen is living abroad. 30% require a photo ID in order to obtain a mail-in ballot. 14% completely ban mail-in voting even for people living abroad. Let's take a look at the 27 countries of the European Union, shall we? 63% ban mail-in voting unless living abroad. 22% require a photo ID to obtain said mail-in ballot, and 22% completely ban mail-in ballots even if you live abroad. Yeah, how many of those guys in office owe everything to me? I made them. Yeah, I made them just like a, like a tailor makes a suit of clothes. I take a nobody, see? Teach him what to say, get his name in the papers. Yeah, paper is campaign expenses. Dish out a lot of groceries and Coal, get my boys to bring the voters out, and then count the votes over and over again until they added up right and he was elected. Now, Pennsylvania, Alan Dershowitz thought it should be taken up. Wisconsin, 4 3, dissent filed by the Chief Justice of the Wisconsin Supreme Court. Michigan, appellate court ruled two to one against Donald Trump, and the Michigan Supreme Court didn't take up the case. So these are three states, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin. I haven't even gotten to the others, including Georgia, where you can't say that what Donald Trump did in filing a lawsuit was nutty, unless you want to call Alan Dershowitz nutty, unless you want to call the dissent in the Michigan appellate court case nutty, unless you want to call the Supreme Court Justice of Wisconsin nutty, all of these people thought that Donald Trump's lawsuits had merit. I want to again quote the gentleman from The Hill. Quote, The key distinction is that Trump hasn't been able to back up any of his fraud claims in court, and they have been dismissed by members of his own party. Close quote. Donald Trump's claims in Pennsylvania, in Michigan, and in Wisconsin were not ludicrous. They were not Looney Tunes. They were not crazy. He lost in close decisions. Now, 66% of Democrats, again, believe the Russians changed vote tallies. Zero evidence that they did. Does anybody call Hillary a pusher of the big lie? 78% of Democrats believe the Russians' interference changed the outcome of the election. We have no evidence one way or the other. So a greater percentage of Democrats believe the big lie of our 2016 the Republicans who believe the big lie about 2020. That is why Joe Biden has painted himself into a corner. I'm Larry Elder, and this has been the Larry Elder Show for Epic Times. We've got a country to save. I'll see you next time. Larry Elder here, and I've got some great news for you. If you're tired of the censorship in this country, then you're in luck. You can go over to epictv.com and watch honest programs that don't spin the facts. EpicTV.com is a brand new, no censorship video platform where you can watch not only my show, but other deep documentaries, great program, wholesome movies that you can watch with your entire family. So head over to EpicTV.com. I'll see you there.